Well, hello, we're back and we are ready to do some more review. Our topics tonight are absolute value equations and absolute value inequalities. So buckle up, it should be a good ride, and I uh, hope you enjoy it. All right, the first of the three topics we're going to cover are absolute value equations. So we can go ahead and title this equations, and we're going to break it up into two cases. So, and again, you copy down what you need to here. Um, the idea is we're going to set the expression inside the absolute value equal to the other expression. Okay, so basically we're ignoring the absolute value. We're just setting the equation equal. And then case two, notice we're setting the expression inside the absolute value equal to the negation of the other expression. All right, so we always have to make sure we write two equations. Third, we have to make sure we check our answers. Okay, often we're going to have extraneous roots. All right, so again, we're going to set our expression equal to the other expression. We're going to set our expression equal to the negation of the other expression. And we're going to check. Now, the other big idea, so let's put a big star next to this. All right, before we do any of this, we need to isolate the absolute value. Okay, and isolate, of course, means get it by itself, get it alone. We need the absolute value alone, and then we go ahead and do these two cases. So let's go ahead and dive into a quick, few quick examples. All right, so I'll dive into this equation with you, um, and then I'll give you a few to practice on your own, and we'll move on to the next topic. So question one, absolute value of 2x plus 1 minus x equals 5. All right, we just started something big on the previous slide here, and that was that we need to isolate the absolute value first. Okay, is this absolute value by itself? And I would say, gosh, no, there's a negative x sitting here. So let's go ahead and add that x to both sides. So I should be getting the absolute value of 2x plus 1 equals, and again, these are not like terms. I can't combine them together. I'm just going to write down 5 plus x. Now that you're isolated, now you've got step 1 out of the way, now we can split into our two equations. And remember, absolute value gets two equations. The first one you leave alone. Okay. The second one's the big deal. The second one says you negate one whole side. And when I say negate, I am multiplying one whole side basically by negative 1. So I'm going to leave my 2x plus 1, and I'm negating this side. I'm multiplying by negative 1. So minus 5 minus x. Now we just simply solve each equation. I'm going to subtract x, subtract x, subtract 1, subtract 1. I get x equals 4. And I'm going to do the same over here. I'm going to add x, add x. So I've got 3x, subtract 1, uh, equals negative 6, and x equals negative 2. Now remember, you're not done. You have to check. All of these equations get checked. And ask yourself, where do you always check stuff? All right, let's go ahead and make a note. We always check in the original. Okay, check in the original. So I believe my original was the absolute value of 2x plus 1 minus 5. I'm sorry, minus x equals 5. All right, so I'm going to check. And when I check, I'm just going to plug my number in and see if I get the, the correct answer. So my first check is for x equals 4. So I have the absolute value of 2 times 4 plus 1 minus 4 equals 5. Uh, that's going to be 8 plus 1 is 9, and 9 minus 4 equals 5. I would say that is true. That checks. Then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to check x equals negative 2. 2 times negative 2 plus 1 uh, minus negative 2 equals 5. Um, so let's check our math here. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, plus 1 is negative 3, but the absolute value then makes it a positive 3. And these two negatives make a positive, so this indeed does also check. So I've got two answers, and again we're just going to state our solutions in bracket notation. And my solution was 4 that checked, and negative 2. Now I want to show you a quick graphical sketch because I think that's actually a lot easier than checking by hand. So here's how we check graphically. Basically, I'm going to take that equation that I separated um, right here, absolute value of 2x plus 1 equals 5 plus x. So 
the absolute value of 2x plus 1 equals 5 plus x. And I suggest doing this. You can put this side in y1, and then you can put this side of your equation in y2. And if they are equal to each other, that means they should intersect. And that's what I did. I graphed this as my 5 plus x, and this is my absolute value. And although I, I kind of didn't go over that very well, you can see that these two intersect twice, here and here. So I know there are two answers, and that means my two answers do check. Example 2. 2 times the absolute value of x minus 2 plus 6 equals 4. Now again, before you start writing me two equations, you've got to say to yourself, isolate the absolute value. Isolate the absolute value. Alright, so you're on your own there. Pause it. Try to get that absolute value by itself, and then we'll compare. Pause it. See what you got. Alright, I'm saying to get this alone, I first have to subtract 6 from both sides. So I've got 2 absolute value of x minus 2 equals 4x minus 6. Okay, then I'm still not isolated because this 2 is out front. I'm going to divide both sides by 2. And again, I'm just going to do that to every term. Um, so maybe it'll make more sense to you if I divide this term by 2 and this term by 2. I'm dividing every term by 2. This is one term because it's being multiplied. So I've got x minus 2 equals, if I divide that by 2, I get 2x minus 3. Okay, now I would say the absolute value is isolated, and you can um, rewrite your two equations. So let me leave you at this point to pause it, try it on your own, and see if you get what I get. So real quickly, I just want to show you my two equations. Um, this one I left alone, and on this bear, I multiplied this side here by negative 1. So this positive 2 turned into negative 2, and the negative 3 turned into a positive 3. So again, um, if you haven't so far solved, pause it and make sure you solve. All right, I've got my two answers there. I've got a 1 and a 5 thirds. Hopefully you've got the same. And now the big important deal is to remember to check. Because I want to tell you right now, one answer on your multiple choice is going to be 1. One answer is going to be 5 thirds. One answer is going to be 1 and 5 thirds. And then one answer is probably going to be the empty set showing nothing works. Now don't fall for the trap. Just because you got two answers doesn't mean they both work. Remember, you've got to check back in the original. So let me rewrite my original down, which was 2 absolute value of x minus 2 equals 4x minus 6. All right, and I'm going to plug each answer back into the original. So let me start with my 1. If x equals 1, I get 2, 1 minus 2 equals 4 minus 6. Uh, that's a negative 2. 1 minus 2 is negative 1, but what does that absolute value do to it? Makes it a positive 1. So does positive 2 equal negative 2? My answer is no. I have to reject that. And I'll do the same thing for my x equals 5 thirds. Uh, so if x equals 5 thirds, again, carefully plug in your 5 thirds. Uh, if you need to cheat with your calculator at the moment, that's okay. Uh, this should get me 5 thirds minus 6 thirds is negative 1 third, and that's going to absolute value is going to make it a positive 1 third, so I've got a 2 thirds here. Um, on this side, I've got 20 thirds minus 18 thirds, which is a 2 thirds here. These are equal, so that checks. So my only solution is the 5 thirds that works. I had to reject the other one, and hopefully that sounds pretty familiar to you. All right, so let's dive into some absolute value inequalities. This time, I, again, I want to start with the keynote that you need to isolate the absolute value. All right, that's got to be goal number one. Once you've done that, you have two key scenarios. The first one, when you look at case one, you're going to rewrite the problem and leave the absolute value sign. All right, I'm sorry, leave the inequality symbol. In the second case, okay, you are going to rewrite the problem without the absolute value sign, reverse the inequality, and negate the value that's not under the absolute and solve the inequality. Okay, so again, this should just be a review. We're going to leave it as is. In this case, we're going to flip the sign and make this side negative. Let's dive into one. Example one. The absolute value of x over 2 plus 6 is less than or equal to 10. All right, is step one done? Is the absolute value isolated? Is it by itself? I would say yes. So at this point, I'm just going to break up into two branches for absolute value. 
First one we're going to leave alone. Okay. Now the second one we're got to do two things. We have to take this sign and flip it. And I have to make this side negated. Multiply by a negative. Okay, so again I'm just multiplying by negative 1. All right, then all I got to do is solve this equation. On my left side, hopefully we're saying subtract 6. Uh, x over 2 is less than or equal to 4. Okay. I'm simply going to kill the fraction by multiplying both sides by 2. Remember, whatever you do to one side, do to the other. x is less than or equal to 8. Same idea over here. I'm going to subtract 6. So I've got x over 2. This time is greater than or equal to negative 16. I'm going to kill that fraction by multiplying by 2 to both sides. So I've got x is greater than or equal to negative 32. Now, at this point, we usually like to put these on a quick number line. Okay, I only need to consider the two numbers I got, negative 32 and 8, and put them in numerical order, negative 32 and 8. All right, let's talk about closed versus open circles. If you see that closed line underneath, that's equal to, though it means solid filled in circle. Okay, now there's no guessing here. Just read the inequality and you've got your answer. It says x, and do you see a less than or greater than? If you don't know, do you see the small end or do you see the big end? I see the small end, so that means less than 8. So I put my pencil on the number 8. Okay, here I am shaded. And if I'm less than 8, I go to the left. Let's verify that this one's correct. It says x is greater than or equal to 30, negative 32. So here I am at negative 32. If I'm greater, picture like a, you know, zeros here, greater numbers are to the right. I'm shading to the right. So you're either going to be inside or on both outsides. Lastly, let's write this in interval notation. Okay, because this is in the middle, I'm going to say negative 32 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 8. Okay, if you shade in the middle, x goes in the middle. These symbols stay the same, less than or equal to, less than or equal to. You should never, ever have two different signs going, you know, in different directions if you're writing one uh, inequality here with x in the middle. And I know it's less than because negative 32 is less than 8. Example 2. 2 times the absolute value of 3 minus 2x plus 1 is greater than or equal to 9. Okay, step 1. Remember, isolate. Isolate that absolute value. Pause it, see what you get. I'm going to subtract 1. So I've got 2 times the absolute value of 3 minus 2x is greater than or equal to 8. And then I'm going to divide by 2. So I've got 3, absolute value of 3 minus 2x is greater than or equal to 4. Hopefully you're feeling good and we're looking okay. Now that the absolute value is by itself, we're going to stem her off into two equations. First one we always leave alone. Okay. Second one, we're going to have to take that inequality sign and flip it and negate this. So multiply that by negative 1. All right, you've got two equations. Pause it, see what you get. All right, see if you fell for the bear trap in there. Um, you'll see that I subtracted 3. That's how I got my 1. And then I divided by a negative. Hopefully the fireworks were going off in your head. And let's go ahead and make a note there, just a reminder. If you divide by a negative, you have to flip the inequality. Or I'm going to say sign, I guess. You have to flip the sign. So notice that I now have x is less than or equal to negative one half. Uh, same idea over here. I subtracted three, um, so I've got negative two x is less than or equal to negative seven. Boom! I'm dividing by another negative. Make sure you flip the sign there. Flip the sign. All right. So let's throw these on a quick number line. I've got to put a negative one half and a seven halves. Okay. Open or closed circle. Quiz yourself. If you see that line underneath, you better be making a closed circle. The line underneath basically tells you to fill it in. All right, now just read. If you can read this, you're in amazing shape. It says, x, what symbol do you see? Less than or greater than? I see the less than first, so that means I'm moving to the left. Less means left. So I go to my negative one half and I move to the left. That means I'm going this way. Verify the other side. x, do you see the big end or small end? Big end. X is greater than 7 halves. If you're greater, are you going to move to the right or to the left? Hopefully you're saying to the right. 
Now, because I went in two separate directions, I need two intervals. Okay, two intervals, two different directions. That's the key. So this side, I would just say all the x values are less than or equal to negative one half, or all the x values are greater than or equal to seven halves. Two different values when I or two different intervals when I go in two different directions. All right, next example is kind of um, a multiple choice example. Now, I just want to be clear, you have to do quite a bit of work on here before you can actually come up with the answer. So just because it's multiple choice doesn't mean you don't need to show any work here. So what's kind of nice about this equation already? Hopefully you've said it, the absolute value is already by itself, it's isolated. So right from here, I'm gonna go ahead and stem off and make my two equations. 4x minus five over three is greater than one and 4x minus 5 over 3, what do two things do you have to do? Less than negative 1. All right, so basically I just need to solve these two equations and I'm good to go. I'm going to multiply um, basically both sides by 3, or you can think of it as putting it over 1 and cross multiplying. I'm going to multiply this side by 3 and this side by 3. Obviously that kills those. 4x minus 5 is greater than 3. Quickly solve, 4x is greater than 8, therefore x has to be greater than 2. Same idea, I'm going to multiply both sides by 3. That will kill these 3's. 4x minus 5 is less than negative 3. 4x is less than, if I add 5, that gets me 2. x is less than 1 half. Alright, I'm going to make my own, no my own number line. I'm going to say 1 half and 2. And then I'm going to ask myself, do I want to see open or closed circles? Oh, clearly, those should be open. And then I'm just going to quickly scan my choices. Does that narrow anybody down? Well, they're all open circles up here. And I'm looking for a positive 1 half and a positive 2. So can I kill anybody based off that? I need a positive... So I'm looking for the positive one-half and the positive two. Well, this is a negative one-half and a positive two, so that guy's out. Uh, that's a positive one-half and a positive two. Positive one-half, positive two, and this is a negative. So I think I've eliminated those two choices. Now I just have to determine where to shade. And again, just read what your inequality says. It says x greater than or less than. Which side do you see here? Greater than two. So you put your pencil on two, and if you were greater, you would move to the right. Verify this one. X is less than a half. If you're at a half and you're less than, you would move to the left. So just want to be clear, this represents the X's are less than one half, or, I'm going in two directions, the X's are greater than two. Alright, the next one or two examples, I just want to practice drawing the number line and stating the answer. If you did all your work, blah blah blah, and you got X is less than two and X is greater than six, all right, again, I'm going to put 2 and 6 on my number line. Open or close circles. Hopefully you're saying open. There's no line there. And if x is greater than 2, I see the big end. Which way are you going to move from 2? To the left or to the right? Hopefully you're saying to the right. And just verify it. x is less than 6. means if I'm at 6 and I'm less than it, that would be like 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. I would go this way. So I'm definitely shading in the middle. And because I'm in the middle, I have a 2 and a 6, I have an x in the middle, and I'm saying 2 is less than x, which is less than 6. I just want to be very clear, these have to go in the same direction when you're in one line here. Okay, there's no word or, you're in between these two numbers, so I'm literally putting the x between these two numbers, and 2 is less than 6. Well, I know we said we were going to cover three topics, but I think my video was getting too long, so I'm going to leave it at 2. So go ahead and copy this last one down and we'll be looking to check this in your notebook tomorrow. Have a great night.